Hey everybody. <laughs> oh yeah, back at you with another exciting video. Um, today I'm coming at you and we're going to be talking about a pack frame slash grill slash my bungee bed. I'll be showing odds and ends. But what I'm going to start out with is, is I'm pretty sure everybody has heard, all bushcrafters have heard of Moore's Kohansky. He's the guy that wrote the book taught, titled Bushcraft. Okay, Now, <clears throat> I think it used to be called Far North Bushcraft, and the later editions was called just Bushcraft. Okay. Morris Kohansky, when he got into survival and training and bushcrafting, it was back in the 60s. And the guy that led the way for him, his mentor, was a guy named Tom Roycroft. Okay? And Tom Roycroft, uh, he had a lot of good ideas that stuck with Morris forever. And Morris took those ideas and sort of put them out into the world so that everybody could learn from them and use them. And one of the ideas is the famous pack frame called the Roycroft pack frame. And basically what that is, is it is a wooden pack frame and it is shaped like a triangle, okay? And the, the idea behind this is you just, you make it out of materials that are out in the, in the woods and you lash it together with some kind of lashing or cordage or rope or whatever you have. And uh, the idea behind this being a triangle instead of a square is on a normal pack frame, it's a square. And so when it's a square, the uh, shoulder pads, shoulder straps, they'll come over your shoulders and they tend to spread apart. So you have to have a, a, a attachment sometimes to pull them together, to hold them together. Now, with this triangular frame, it puts these so close together at the top point that what it does is it, it sort of holds them right beside your neck so that when you put it on, it'll, um, when you put it on and it goes on like this, they tend to not spread out apart. And what you do with that, as you can see on the back back here, it's just, it's a triangular, it's a triangular frame. And what a lot of people would do with these type of frames is they would, the old timers is they would take all of their gear and they would put it in, wrap it up in a wool blanket, okay? And, or possibly their canvas tarp or their, their oil, oil treated tarp. And then what would they do with that is that they would take their frame and then they would set their whole bundle on top of it, okay? And they would lash it to it with some cordage. They would wrap it all around in one big neat bundle and that was their pack. And that's basically explaining the Roy Croft pack frame. And I can never leave anything alone. <laughs> so what I have done is I have decided to make that frame into a permanent grill. <laughs> and I, this is brand new and I've never tried it out before. It's a, it's a big triangle shaped grill. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up my pack and then I'm going to strap it to my back. <laughs> so let me get my pile of gear and I'm going to throw it all real quick on a tarp and uh, possibly a blanket too. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to strap it on it. All right, I'm, I got uh, some of my gear here that I have just thrown in a blanket. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to ease you down here and I'm going to show you the uh, way I'm going to try to pack up a, a a neat little trip and test this frame and see how it works. <laughs> First order of business, what I'm going to do here is I have a tarp. I'm just going to undo it, roll it out. I'm pretty sure that's going to screw up the camera, the reflective qualities of it. And if you'll ease over here, you can see where I've got all this stuff on this blanket. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump it out. <laughs> in my typical organized fashion. And then I'm going to take the blanket and fold the blanket in half. And put the blanket right here. Ease you back over to the blanket. Okay, now what I have now is I have the blanket on top of the tarp. Alright, so going to have here 
this how could i do this video without a genuine moore's pot <laughs> what i'm gonna do i'm gonna pull the lid off and i'm gonna put in my coffee and my oatmeal that way it won't get banged around and i wonder i have a spork in here i wonder if that'll fit in there yeah that'll fit i'll put the lid on all right that'll be good to go on that pull this cover back up tighten it up a little bit so that the lid won't fall off all right so now there's my moore's pot with the uh, oatmeal and coffee in it and here's a i have a ferro rod hanging from the the thing but then i have a small percolator can't leave home without it and i have let's see okay here's a little bag right here and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm gonna fill it up i'm gonna put some things in it so what i have is three four five i have five hanks of mule tape i love mule tape that'll be i don't even know if i'm going to need a tarp or not because of the, well, the way the weather will be so that goes in and i have a flashlight crank up time because i'm not real fond of batteries or anything battery operated just throw that in there a couple of s hooks never can tell when i may need them I don't weigh much let's see and then i have this is a uh, piece of scotch bright for cleaning the grill when i get done cooking on it so that i can attach my pack back to it and then i have a cup so let's see i think i put the cup down in the bottom these are some new things i don't even know if i'm going to use them or not that i'm going to try out there's these little bungee balls you get from Harbor Freight. They're supposed to be for tying down a tarp. Now, I may or may not use them with tent stakes, but I'll throw them in for just in case. And then I have a saw. Okay, throw that in there. And I think that's it. All right, so what I have is three items right here. And then I have, this is a bag that I have made. Let me ease you up just a little bit. This is a bag that I've made, and it's really bizarre looking, but it'll make more sense later on what it is. But it's a heavy canvas bag, and uh, it's got four grommets in it. And that's pretty stupid looking, but it'll make sense later when I show it to you when we get out and about. And what I have is a 25-foot bungee cord, okay? And then I have another 25-foot bungee cord, okay? And what I did is I bought these, and I bought a 50-foot a bungee cord, and then I attached the little hooks to the end of them. All you do is you just slide this little collar on, and then you push this hook on, and that's how it gets attached to it, okay? Now, I know some of you may be curious about how I made these or how hard or easy they were to make. Um, not that big of a deal i recorded a little bit when i made them just for just just in case you wanted to see so let's let's take a look at that real quick all right i got you down here close here is one end of the bungee and this is the little sleeve thimble looking thing and all that does is that just slides on no big deal and then the hook part it has these two little things on the side here that mash in and what they do is they dig into the cord so what you do is you just push the cord in like that got it all the way up in there then you take the sleeve let's see how this works then the sleeve slides on and pops into place it's supposed to let me get a pair of pliers right here in the old toolbox. You see, this is a first for me. Let's see if I can get this pulled together. Mm, there you go. And that's it. That's how you put the end on. Took a little bit to pop it on, so... Maybe it won't come off. I'll be able to hook around to itself whenever I go to make what I'm going to make. <laughs> Let's see how strong it is. Slid that on. 
and now this part here slides up on and it's impossible to put on behind them so let's take the pliers squeeze it on and there you have it cut this back off and there's the hook it's not coming apart it's secure let's take the other end all right let's take both ends and put them together and i'm gonna pull on them <laughs> that's great all right that's it <laughs> and that's how you put it together <laughs> All right, I got 50 feet of bungee cord. <laughs> All right, so I pretty much have everything I need here except for my machete, and I'll carry it on my belt. And it's all laying right here, and I'm going to throw this thing back in. It's a bag, and it's got paracord, paracord tied to each end of it with four grommets. So that's normally, whenever I'm on a normal trip, this will carry. This is a bag for, like, bungees or cordage. But I'm going to be using the bungees for a different use on this one because this is a new experimental thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this up. Okay. You never know when you may need a blanket. Especially if you're at a higher elevation. And it may get cold at night. So what I'm going to do now, fold this over. Fold this over. And it may not hurt to carry, carry two tarps. Fold that over, fold that over. And just keep folding it over. Just like that. And fold the bottom over. Just like that. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a bungee cord. Now I'm gonna say this: Don't ever make if you ever if you ever get into these bungee cords, don't ever make one longer than 25 feet ever. Because I had plans on making uh, two 50 foot ones, but it's it's ridiculous how bad they get tangled up. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. They they they, they tangle up quicker than anything I've ever seen. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that bungee cord right around there. And give it a pull then I'm just gonna start wrapping it around it just like that and if you've ever messed with a bungee cord like this you'll understand it gets so tangled up all right let's wrap around the bottom a couple of times uh, still in camera shots wrapping around the top a couple of times and now what we're going to do is we're going to set our pack frame on top. And then what I'm going to do, let's see how I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to feed this through. See, this is, <laughs> this is where it's going to start getting fun because I've never done this. This is the first time I've ever done this on camera. And this is the first time I've ever used these bungees like this. So let's go through there. And this will actually take a much bigger pack. A much, much bigger pack. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed this through here. You still with me? I'm going to feed this through a couple times. Pull this all the way up to here. And then I'm going to feed it through here. Alright, now we're getting somewhere. Now I'm going to start pulling it tight. And then I'm going to come through here. And let's flip it over. Now I'm going to come up here. <laughs> Isn't this fun? And then I'm going to go through here and attach here. Okay, doesn't look good. Very unlikely to win a beauty contest. But I'm trying. All right. Now that ain't going to stay. So what I'm going to do with this corner, it just happens to be that I'm going to tie this corner off here because 
the bungee's coming undone here. I had a feeling this would happen. Let me turn this around where you can see it. Like I said, this is a first for me. Anywhere where this bungee wants to come undone, I'll feed it through and tie it off. Just like that. And that should hold it. I may have to tweak the other side. It doesn't look like anything else is coming off. And that's it. <laughs> it's on a grill. <laughs> now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to make this take this other bungee and I'm gonna make the other bungee my shoulder straps. So let's see how well that works. Now I'm in the process of untangling this. If any of you ever get involved with these bungees, believe me, you're gonna find out. And they're honestly nothing like what I thought. You know, I thought when I got them that it was gonna be just like, oh wow, 25 foot bungees. <laughs> these things, the way they're designed, they just, it doesn't matter how careful you are with them, they just naturally get all wadded up. Okay. Now it did okay to strap that thing on. So, what I'm gonna do now is I got this completely undone. And I'm gonna take the two ends. This is how I think I'm gonna do it. See, because you see, a lot of times when the old timers used the Roy Croft pack frames, they would use the actual cordage that they were gonna use as the straps. So I'm gonna throw the other end out there. And I got the two ends and I'm gonna feed them in through the top. Okay. Right through the top. Alright. There. That's fed through the top. Now what I'm gonna do take one end. See, it's already instantly tangled up. <laughs> Alright. Take this. Feed this through the bottom, just like that, and then feed this through the bottom, just like that. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over so that it's going to lock it in on the edge. <clears throat> that way possibly it'll keep it from sliding over and then lock it over one more time. And I think that's going to give me some loops to feed through. So I'll feed through here, feed through here. This may be boring for some people, but this is going to be kind of complicated. Alright, once that's fed through there, then you feed back through here. All right, there you go. Now I'll take this, feed it through the top again. Just like that. And then I'll feed through the loop. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna continue feeding through these loops on each side so that I'll have a place. So that'll be my shoulder strap. I'm going to continue doing this on both sides, and then I'll cut the camera off. <laughs> okay, and now I have done it. It is completed. What I have, anybody that's familiar with the old Roy Croft pack frame, you have a wooden frame. Okay, I don't have it with me. I already put it up. A wooden frame with a pack attached to it with cordage. And in this case, what I have is I have a bunch of stuff in a blanket and a tarp and I have it attached to a cooking grill sh shaped like a triangle and a total of 50 foot of bungee cords. So, now the way I've got them wadded up here, they may be, you don't have to use all of them. And I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm just gonna pull two of them up because it's a small frame. You can pull up, the more weight you have on it, the more of the cords that you can use. And it already feels, Pretty, pretty good with just those. So, what I'm gonna do, <laughs> and look at that, I'm not needing all those other bungee cords because it's, it's not sagging. 
I hope you're seeing that okay. Okay, now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do, yeah, this ain't bad. And see, so what I can do is as I'm hiking along the trail, let me show you. The way I have those wrapped around the corner, the way I have these wadded up, if I want to, I can pull two out. Let's see. There's two. I'm going to pull two out and see if they'll work. Slide that arm through. <laughs> Man, that's some strong bungee material. Okay, now that seems to be a little bit more secure. Alright, how's that? That ain't going to be too bad. Alright, now, <clears throat> tomorrow, I'll put on my pack, put on my machete, and let's head out in the woods and let's see how this unwinds and unravels and, and, and let's see how the other use for the bungee cord, which in my mind is going to be a bungee bed. <laughs> so, let's head out to the woods. Alrighty, I think I found a good spot. Uh, I'm gonna take, let's see, I'm gonna take my pack off and get out my folding saw. And what I gotta do, I found a good campsite. And what I found is a, there's a, a couple of down trees right over there, which is gonna be good, which is gonna be the base for my bed. And then there's a tree that's right over there that I believe I'm gonna be able to saw up to use for my uh, bed rails for my bed. And then I got to find some rocks to put the grill on. So, but this looks like a pretty good spot here. I got hills on both sides of me. And then I, I found kind of a flat spot right here where these trees are. So I'm going <laughs> to take off the old pack and unravel it. And uh, then we're going <laughs> to... We're gonna see how, uh, how how easy it is to take the bungees off. I may wind up having to cut the camera off for this one though. <laughs> All right, this looks like a pretty decent spot right here. So let's see. <laughs> uh, like I said, th this is a first for me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how these bungees are gonna go because these bungees, I have discovered <clears throat> that they pretty much have a mind of their own. Now, I already see spiders running around everywhere. So, I'm going to miss not strapping my stuff to a tree. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, it's all packed up just like I had it last time. So, what I'm going to do is let's unhook some of this. Let's see how well this thing comes undone. I may take about a minute unraveling this. And then I may have to take off, uh, cut off the camera for a minute because it may be just an incredible amount of unraveling. Let's see. So far, so good. Let's see. Yeah, see, now it's starting to get a little confusing. And see, it's starting to curl up on its own. So I think what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish unraveling this part, and then I'll cut you back on. It actually wasn't as bad as I thought, unraveling it. I will say this, that I believe if, if those hooks were any bigger, which I was, I was concerned about how small these were, but the fact that they're smaller, it actually makes it easier to unravel. Alright, so what I'm going to do now... Uh, you can see that this is all wadded up because that's just it seems like that's what this bungee cord does and I'm not even going to try to wrap that up into a decent wrap because it just I don't think it's going to work because uh, it, it's it's like it's got a mind of its of its own and uh, this this bungee material it seems pretty good because it's uh it's not where it was bent around some of these corners and edges It hasn't seemed to kink up permanently Which I was concerned about it doing 
because cheap bungee material has a memory and it will actually kink up. Let's see. Right. Where's the other end of this? Let me feed it through here. <laughs> okay, now we've got to feed it through the other way. <laughs> I have the grill loose. I'll clear out some leaves and find a place to put that here in a minute. And it seems like it's bent just a little bit from being wore on my back, but that's not that big of a deal because I can bend it back pretty easy. It's pretty, pretty flexible grill. I made it out of stainless steel. Let's see. Finish unwrapping this. And unhook it. Alright, now that didn't take too long. Alright, now I have my two bungee cords here. Now let's unwrap our our pack right here. I think the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, find three big rocks right near where I'm going to set up the bed. Yeah, I'm going to grab three rocks, but I'm not actually going to set up my grill until I've got the bed done because I'm not sure. I can put the grill anywhere where I've got three rocks, but the bed, i got to kind of be kind of choosy because I want it to be up off the ground a little bit so I can get some airflow under me. So... I'm going to grab the rocks, and then I'm going to grab the wood. Oftentimes, uh, I have friends ask, and they say that they have trouble with finding rocks whenever they're out in the woods, because when you're up in the mountains, there's rocks everywhere. And <clears throat> I can't explain why, but I've always had the most luck with when I'm hunting for rocks, because rocks have so many different uses in a campsite, and especially in the winter time, like when you're gonna build your small rock fireplace. But what I've noticed here lately, and I can't explain why, is things like what I've noticed right now is, and maybe it's the years of the water going by, but if you'll see where this dip is right here, where it's going downhill, and see there's a hill up here, and the hill is coming down, and then it keeps going downhill. But the thing is, is, is there's, a, there's like a, a, de, a dip, a depression going right through here. And I have noticed, and I don't know why, that there's always rocks down in these lower parts where these valleys are. I guess maybe because when it really floods and throughout the years, that's where the rain goes. So I'm going to walk down there, and I guarantee you I'll find at least one rock right there. And I, I haven't seen any rocks on my way here. There's a small rock, but it ain't big enough. Yep, here's one. Yep. Wow. Oh. And there's another. See, it's exactly as I thought. I found two big old huge rocks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow this valley all the way down and I'm gonna try to find three, possibly six of these. Now I'm always stressing to everybody that I am more of what you call a bushcrafter camper kind of guy. I'm, I'm not necessarily what you'd call a survivalist, but there's, there's a few odds and ends that I might know that could possibly help you out. So 
So here's a little trick. The little trick I was telling you about the about the low spots, because I've heard people before freaking out whenever they were saying like, "Ooh, in a survival situation." <laughs> I don't even use those words. I call it a bad situation. <laughs> but anyway, this is proof right here of what I was talking about about the deep cuts in the land and the way it does because I have found a spot that let's say for example you was in a winter survival situation and you was like okay I gotta have fire but I want to attach it to my shelter and I'm out in the woods and all I see is leaves and I don't see any rocks anywhere but I need massive amounts of rocks so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a rock fireplace now I'm gonna turn you around and I'm gonna show you I'm gonna follow along this low spot here and I'm going to show you where there's enough rocks to build a massive fireplace just out in the woods in the middle of nowhere so it could come in handy one day and what I'm doing is I'm looking uphill okay I'm looking straight uphill and you can see it's starting to dip down right there and as it comes down to here you can see hopefully on camera you can see where it dips way down okay now where it dips down, I'm going to follow along with the camera. You can see where it's dipping down right there. Now if I walk off, like, along this deep part, and there you go. Rocks, 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 rocks. So see, that's a... That's a gold mine of information for if you need a whole bunch of rocks. Just look for the low spots, and that's where you'll find them. Evidently, the water washes them away. All right, I got all of my rocks over there, so now what I'm going to do is I got to cut up my wood, and I have some wood right here. So, time to break out the old saw. Can you see it? <laughs> There's that sun glare again. I'm going to get to the exciting part here in a minute where we start actually setting up everything. But you got to gather materials. Always remember, if you need you a good vice or for supporting your work, just grab you a couple of trees close by. that let's see <clears throat> that is a good way for cutting a v-notch in wood <laughs> now comes the fun part the part you all been waiting on <laughs> the bungee part and the assembly part What I'm doing now is I'm taking the part that I cut the V in the end. Got my bungee material here. And like I said, this is <laughs> this is totally unrehearsed. I'm doing this for the first time. I've never set this up before. This is with brand new bungees. And uh, you know the bungee cords themselves are good because they're for like you can use them for ridge lines, guy lines. Like I just showed, you can use them for attaching uh a pack to a frame so now let's see if, let's see if this wadded up mess will make a comfortable bed i'm just taking this v block right here and what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna cram it in between here just like that then i'm gonna put the bungee around and hook it Is 
about right there. And now I'm just going to start stretching it back and forth. I'll give it a little bit of stretch each time, a little bit of pull. And I'm just going to hope it doesn't get too wadded up. I'm just kind of unraveling it as I go. I got this end up here done, this part, and I got a feeling that 75 feet is going to be perfect, and I've only got 50 feet, but 50 feet is going to have to do. And I'm going to show you something. I've only got one cord on it, and this, uh, I can barely push apart. So that's that bungee cord is going to hold that pretty good. So you can move that around if you have to. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get another log or piece of a log so that I can set that other end up off the ground a little bit before I put the other bungee on. I'm going to put one underneath you know, that You so end. far I've used the saw for everything and the saw is a good tool. The saw is a safe tool, but <laughs> what kind of a video would it be if I didn't use a machete at least once? That's my new CR, CRKT Chance in Hell machete. It's just an okay machete. I don't love it and I don't hate it. It's pretty comfortable grip though. Now it's time for the other wadded up cord. <laughs> Let's see. Now one thing I've already noticed about this bungee material is you want it to be good and tight already. You don't want it to be real loose because if it's too loose you may sag down and hit the ground. All right. 
I kind of spread it out down there on the end because that's where my feet will be and they don't weigh as much as my upper body and my upper body will be up here. Now I'm going to dig out that bag that I was showing you about and I'm going to show you what it's going to be for. This is the bag that I was talking about. I've never shown this bag before but this was a bag that I used to use with some of my rope beds and uh, the thing is is you can't very well lay your head on rope or bungee material. So what this is is this it's a heavy canvas bag with four grommets and in the future when I carry a regular backpack this will be what I will use to keep the bungees in but you just lay it over the wood here I think I got you in shot and pull it under and tie it through all right you want to kind of center it up All right, get it good and tight. That's it. Pull it like this. Tie it in a knot. There, there you go. All right, now you take the other end, which I have tied it up too close. Scoot it down a little bit. That'll work. I might have to just tie this underneath. Like that. Like that. See. And give this a pull. But what this is going to be is this is your pillow where you lay your head. Now the fact that it's a bag, you can stuff the inside with leaves or you can take if you got some extra socks or a shirt or something. You can stuff them in there and it'll make a nice pillow. So let's tie this jewel off. Alright. Alright, let's see if we got something stuffed in there. What I have right here is... I have my small uh, bag that I use for my camera gear and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cram it into that bag for my pillow. Right. Now, it's time to try it. Alright, first time on camera. So let's just see how this is going to work. Now, if all goes well, if all goes well, it'll feel kind of like a mattress. It'll be nice and springy. And I don't know why I haven't tried these bungee cords earlier, but I've always wanted to, to, to try. <laughs> so, first time on camera, let's give this a shot. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. This is great. <laughs> now, when I just first get into it, my butt goes down to the ground. But when I put all my body weight on it, I'm supported off the ground because it's more distributed over the bungees. I'll give you a couple more views. I'm almost, I'm almost out of battery. But I'm going to give you a couple of more views, and I'll throw the grill up real quick. I'm not going to use it till in the morning. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to get you a couple more views of this, because this is such a cool bed. It has turned out so great. I am so happy. <laughs> I'm loving this. <laughs> this is so much better than rope. <laughs> oh. This is awesome. It's like sleeping at home. 
These bungees have got my approval. I love them. Oh. I just couldn't imagine during the winter time having a foam pad under me. I mean, it'd be just like having a bed at home. Oh. Nature's rake. <laughs> Got me a spot. Uh, got me a spot down to the dirt. Now start throwing the rocks over there and I'll have me a place for a grill nearby. That way if I have a fire going, smoke will help keep away the mosquitoes. Here we go. There we go. All right, let's see if everything's going to fit on the grill. Let's see. I'll put the coffee pot over here. Now, actually, I think I've got room for a third thing here. Let's see what I got here. Oh yeah, I got more than enough room here. See, I got room. I can make coffee here, and I can use my pot here, and if I had a third pan, I think there'd be room for the third pan. That is pretty cool. All right, I got all that set up for in the morning. I'll have oatmeal and coffee in the morning. Put this back in here. All right, I am, whew. How about out of battery? Let's see. All right, let's wrap this thing up. All right, well that about wraps everything up. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, my pack grill was a is a success. Um, <clears throat> I love it. I think it's going to be a great grill because it's it's the pack frame. It's not too heavy, not too light. Uh, there's plenty of room to put things on it. I can use it for three different items if I want to. Uh, the bungee bed, the bungee cords, they're a little aggravating to deal with the way they wad up, but. Yes, they'll curl up, they'll wad up, but they don't actually knot up. They just, they just kind of curl up. Uh, I would advise <laughs> that you try it. If you're into bushcraft beds and things, you know, I mean, I've used rope and paracord for years and years and years. And uh, just recently, I found out about the long length bungees. And now that I've tried them, I mean, they're, they're incredible. I love them. They're awesome. <laughs> so, uh... I think I'm actually going to lay down for a while. I'm pretty exhausted. And uh, so I hope you had fun. I hope you in, in, enjoyed it all. Uh, you know, get out and do things. Try things. You don't have to do things to the norm. Uh, oh, now my battery's blinking red. I better wrap it up quick so I can do my closing sweep scenes. <laughs> but anyway, get out in the woods and have fun. And uh, enjoy life while you can. And make some gear. It's satisfying. You don't have to buy everything. And I will see you in the next one.